Perfect. Here we go. Welcome to the Scrum Speakers. For those who have not been here before, and I think Ursula is one of them, uh, we started Scrum Speakers in 2019. And uh, one of the biggest reasons was to get together different people who are practicing Scrum in a forum and uh, talk about different perspectives. Basically, you know, the perspective of a Scrum master, a product owner, or a developer. And we did it in both languages, in English and in German. So we had a speech in English, and then we had a speech in German, and then we switched around. And over time, we moved from um, speeches to also playing a bit of agile games and uh, we also debated every now and then. And in fact, last time we tried out an open space. So it was basically completely agenda less. We came in, picked up three ideas, and we discussed it. And this time we have something different again. Uh, so what we have this time is a celebrity interview, a tool which will be presented by Stefan, and we're going to do some drawing together. So enough of that, let's jump in straight in, right? Now, what is a celebrity interview? Now, I hope that everyone knows what a celebrity is. Um, see, in, in our group right now, for example, Mel Kelly is a celebrity. <laughs> but... Um, a celebrity is somebody who's famous, somebody who's celebrated. But I was wondering, you know, why does, why do we, why do we look out? You know, we should be looking at our own teams. You know, the, the developers in our teams, the product owners, the scrum masters, the stakeholders, these are celebrities worth celebrating. So what we're going to do today is to pick one of you from the audience who's a volunteer to take part in the celebrity interview. I'll be the interviewer for the first interview. And if we have some time, we'll also do a second interview. And uh, you can play either the interviewer or the one being interviewed. So for the first round, I'd like to ask for a, a volunteer other than Stefan who would like to be interviewed. No volunteers. So let's let's start with Mel. OK, go for it. Mel, can do you see the do you see the resemblance? The resemblance is that you is it? Good. Here we go. So, Mel, I'm going to, just for the sake of people, just so that you know, um, I'm going to ask a few questions to Mel, and we're going to have a conversation back and forth, and I'll try and, um, you know, play on the ideas that Mel comes up with, and then ask him further questions. Okay, so, for, for your information, Mel is recently big, is a... Um, Scrum Master. He just uh, certified as a Scrum Master recently. Now, Mel, from, for our purpose today, what role are you playing in the Scrum team right now? I'm a Scrum developer. A Scrum developer. So let's use that as the role that you're playing. And for me, that is the celebrity that I'm interviewing, right? You are you as a Scrum developer is the celebrity, and I'm going to interview you as that celebrity. Right. So here goes. Let's now stop sharing this screen. There we go. And um, Mel, my first question to you is: What inspired you? to join this team as a developer? <laughs> do you want the real answer or do you want the celebrity answer? Real answer. 
it, it, I didn't have a choice. It was imposed on me. <laughs> uh -huh. We were using Kanban before, and then they decided to use Scrum. They reckoned that it would be able to make it more transparent, scalable, and all that other good things. So, yes, it was. I was working on a project, working in Kanban mode, and suddenly they decided to impose a Scrum structure on top of it. Okay. Now let's give me the celebrity answer on this. What inspired you to join this team as a developer? Ranjit, when I met you, I when I heard you talk about Scrum, I was inspired. I was touched. I was moved. I realized I had a new mission in life. I had a new purpose. It was <laughs> all about how could I be a part of the movement, of the global movement, of the, not a global movement, a universal movement, Scrum. It is changing the world. It is changing everything. It is changing everything, and I wanted to be a part of that. So the first time I got a chance, well, I got myself on a This reminds me team of, a, like of a debate which happened recently in television, but let's move on. So Mel, what are the challenges? Tell us about a challenge that you face in your team uh, as a developer. Yeah, one of the, the big challenges that we get is we get we we give our velocity, our tasks are planned for that velocity, then we're overloaded. So we give 10 days perhaps, 10 days for our two weeks program. We get overloaded because just in case we have extra work to do, so we get tasks for 12 or 13 days, and then we get a couple of ad hoc tasks on top of that. And then we get an extra couple of meetings here and there thrown into that as well. So we end up about 18 or 18 or 20 days of work to do in 10 days. So that's it. One of the one of the challenges. Oh, okay. So, what keeps you going? <laughs> <laughs> My girlfriend kicks me out of the bed in the morning. I have no choice. <laughs> <laughs> no choice. Oh, that's a good one. Okay. Now let's assume. Let's assume you were given a choice. Don't tell us that you're gonna start a comedian. Um, <laughs> If you were given a choice to be a developer in the same team with the same goal, what would you be doing? So, I, I'm not sure what the question is again. If what? So I kept hearing no choice, no choice. But let's say you had a choice. Oh, well, now I know. In this team. Oh, now, I, now I'm changing the world. Now I'm part of the global movement. So why would I why would I veer away from that? Okay, just, and, and part of mind. the global movement is because of your uh, recent um, certification as a Scrum Master. Well, no, being part of the team. No, it's it, it's a it's a good way to work. It's a good way to organize the team of, of developers that we have. So it's a good way to organize it. So I mean, it was in, it was enforced upon us. But I'm not saying that I'm resenting it or resisting it. I'm just saying it's not something I chose. But now that we have it, it it's pretty good. Oh, okay. okay. Now, I have another minute before I'm going to ask the audience for some of the questions that they might have for you, and uh, we'll have another five minute audience round. So okay. the audience can get ready with their questions in the next one minute. Um, so, Mel, if what Tell me, tell me one thing that you would like to do in your next sprint. What would I, one thing I would like to do? Yeah. One thing I would like to do is to get no unnecessary distractions and actually be able to complete the assigned tasks mm -hmm. and, and, and not be giving all these spurious ad hoc additional tasks. OK. Great. Thanks a lot, Mel. OK. See, one one of the things that um, the celebrity interview also can be used for is in addition to talking to existing members in the team, you can also use it uh, if you have new members in the team, people that um, other members do not know. You know, they've had just a formal introduction and they've said a few highs and uh, things like that. But uh, an interview can actually take much longer. And you can also share the questions that you want to ask the person much earlier. 
So let's say you have a product owner who's joining your team, who's completely from a different domain, and uh, but they've had their share of successes and have led different teams. You can actually get them onto a meeting where you have the entire team and you ask them about their previous job, what they've achieved, and you do it in a in a style of an interview that you find interesting. You know, there are some people who like, say, I like Trevor Noah. Let's say I do the style of Trevor Noah and making my questions. That could be one way of doing it. You could like opera and you could have your questions done with the celebrity in that style. It's each of you can do your celebrity interview in your style. Now let's ask the audience for the next four minutes if they have any questions for Mel. I, I have a question. Yes, welcome. So uh, my question to you. So you are, uh, you seem to be, for me, for me, uh, your PI is a very um, pa um, um, passionate uh, software developer. I think you <laughs> have your job, and uh, I think you are probably very doing your things very well. What was the best piece of software uh, that you have ever made? The best piece of software that I've ever made. Thank you, Wolfgang, for all those fantastic, front, those fantastic compliments. Those fantastic compliments, which are all absolutely completely true. So I'm, I'm very impressed that you you were aware of all of those things about me. The most amazing piece of software was actually a piece of software last year. It was we ended up with an article in the Zudeutsche Zeitung for this piece of software that we developed. It was basically cognizant coders turned crime busters was how we described it internally. Basically, we had a small little piece of software and we were able to help the police in Nordrhein-Westfalen to bust a crime gang because we were able to see that they were ordering SIM cards, changing their addresses within a particular period of time. And so was, they were swapping the addresses and they were swapping it to a particular address. And so with this data, we were able to actually then present that. The fraud department was able to present that to the police. The police then were able to bust the crime gang. So thankfully, my name did not appear in the newspapers. I don't want the crime gang to know that I was involved with this. But... <laughs> But if, but if I must but if I must admit the honest part to it is actually we had a a, a work student at practicum she actually developed the software and I I just reviewed it to make sure that it was actually meeting coding standards. But but, <laughs> but, but, uh, but but it still ended up in the newspaper and I'm taking the credit for it. So, but what was you are you are typically English downplaying your role. But what was your greatest contribution to, to this success? I reviewed it. I reviewed the software. Okay. I reviewed it. I, I made sure that it was... It sometimes. I reviewed it. I made it compliant, industry compliant. I fixed there was a couple of little bugs in it. So I didn't create it. I didn't write it. But I reviewed it and, and, and gave it to Gold Seal. And so it went out there. And, you know, we, we saved the world. We saved... No. 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 Ask, <laughs> let one more person ask a question to Mel. I have a question, Mel. Yes, Fida. So um, as a recently certified Scrum Master, you definitely have now paired uh, theory with practice. Um, after, during your training as a certified Scrum Master, um, what things did you realize you were, what were the differences between reality and theory from your workplace. Yes, a lot of people say that there's a difference between the theory and the reality. I'm lucky enough that I'm in a project that we absolutely 120% apply everything from the Scrum model. The Scrum model is Are you being sarcastic? I'm jealous. The Scrum model is immutable. Vida, you know, it's Scrum or really? it's not Scrum. You cannot, <laughs> you, can't, you cannot take minor components out of the Scrum, otherwise it is no longer Scrum. That's what, that's what, that's what the exam says. <laughs> now we do about 70%, I would say, Alice. Okay. Perfect. I, I think the time for our first interview is 
over. And what I've learned here is, um, you know, we've, we've actually, thanks to, um, thanks to Wolfgang, we actually know what made Mel proud. You know, sometimes we have developers on the team and we never ask them what made them proud. And I think that was a good question. And um, Mel, Mel making Munich a safer place is definitely something um, worth knowing. <laughs> No, he said the world. Yeah, no, not the world. Yes, get it right. <laughs> and Veda, for that question, that's an interesting way to understand. You know, how does a person look at process and use it in their team? Right. I mean, whether it's for themselves or for the people around them. And now we know how Mel would react when he is the scrum master on this team or the next team he he takes over. <laughs> Hey, in the interest of time, um, and that we started a bit later, I would like to move on to the second part of the meeting, right? And for the second part of a meeting, and then if we have time, we can still do an interview. Um, but for the second part of the meeting, this is where we talk about tools. You know, they say tools make a man. You know, a carpenter without his tools would not be able to make the tables and chairs that we are sitting on. But then I went and asked my daughter, my daughter's name is Maya, and this is Maya the bee, right? The Maya the bee was telling me that she uses the right tools to get honey. Right? She's got the feelers which help her, and uh, she's got the right nose which helps her smell the right flower to get the honey from. And she's very, very curious. And one of the people in this room, Stefan, is actually going to tell us more about this, more about a tool. So Maya is going to fly all the way through and see if she can okay. find out okay. more. Thank you. Thank you, Ranjit. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Oop, oh, what happened Maya to just flew in. Oh. Maya disappeared, but the pattern is still there. So thank you very much, Ranjit. <laughs> it is, is what happens when you mix offline and online because <laughs> all from the um, offline world, we all know that this is a kind of a common experience in team building exercises. We pass around objects and then play with them. But online, things don't work uh, that well. In, they don't, don't work out that well. So my topic is actually a team building now, and I've, it's a fairly open open uh, the session, so you should to participate, and I really want to know more uh, from your ideas than I can present here. The, uh, the, we have all been separated from our team, and I don't know how you feel when you don't see the people. Are you feeling sad? And how do you use online tools to compensate? So today, this, uh, I want to show you one tool that I, I want to do more like an experiment with you. So you might rightfully ask the question, why do I experiment with you rather than experiment with some real team? That's, uh, that's a, a fair question, but I do not come empty handed. I have some experience also to share with you in real teams. And one thing that I found that really works is polling. So please let me start as a warm up with some Poll, wait, this must come out. So in the chat, in the chat, I'll share with you some um, a link. So please, would you uh, participate here and share your opinion with polling? And while you fill in that form, I want to start getting ready with screen sharing. So get ready with screen sharing. Does that work? Ranjit? I can see the, I, I'm, I'm looking at the different options in the poll. Okay, let's look at the results. Okay, two people participated there right now. Okay, I don't do poll, okay. Okay, you are a very disappointing audience here right now. Okay, it's getting better. It's getting better. So, oh, all five I, of us voted. Do I just click one, abstimmen, and that's it? Okay. Yes, so one more missing. And that is not too exciting. So apparently you don't like interacting via online tools yet, but maybe I can convince you to change your mind. Because what I want to do 
is I want to share another tool and see if that's better, if that's working better for you <laughs> than just doing polling. So let me share that link and oh, you can try to open it or you can watch my introduction as I go here. So this is a mind map tool and I want to sh have your ideas added to this tree. So you go to the edit section, oh, Ursula's already here. So what you can do, you can add a feature. For example, online team building is about games and you add that and then you can add more subjects anywhere here. And another thing that you can do, you can upload a photo of yours and maybe add your support or for your ideas, what you think is worth uh, going into details with. So I see three people already participating here and maybe you can add some of the ideas that you think team building or let's let's say team building in general doesn't matter does, does not make it about online only let's say what is important about team building and let's see uh, some of the ideas and if you have something to talk about then i would like you to uh, i'd like to give you one to two minutes to express your uh, your idea and why it's important and why it should be in this tree and when you're finished, we might mark this as being satisfactory explained. Okay, I see you really like the drawing features. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Um, okay. I, I, Get in I cannot contact. join. Uh, why is it? I, maybe you might. Do you see the screen here? You can uh, click. Well, okay, drawing is just pen, pen, I guess. I don't know why people are drawing. I wanted you to actually uh, write some words <laughs> here. Get, some, get in contact as well remote. So maybe, maybe can I ask, can I ask the author of that contribution? Create rituals and common comments. Okay, can I ask the author of that comment, Ursula, I think, can I ask you and uh, to explain what you think is behind that message and how to yes and how, how to justify its position here on this mind map uh you mean my two uh comments in the mind map getting yes. contact? yeah yes that would be great so getting contact means um yeah very very simple things for example um to to turn on your cameras when you have a remote event um, and um, the second one is create rituals and common experience. For example, play a game once a week online or um, having uh, come together um, 15 minutes before the daily. Yeah, switch on your cameras, talk, play a game, um, have fun, laugh together. I think that's the most important thing. Um, to create relationship, and you can do that as well uh, online. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Uh, that's uh, that's uh, very nice. So I've uh, taken freedom to add your points here. So turn on cameras, play ah, online okay. games. Yeah. That's I can already. Add I, I can as well share some games if you want. Okay, so games, I actually made this point games. Oh, I made this games point here. So oh. maybe someone here, if you want, you can uh, ex tell us about the games that you like, that you think are good for, for team building. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we can also have someone else in between. And um, maybe, I don't know uh, who is there. Veda, do you want to share one of your favorite games that you have seen for team building in well, agile scrum settings or just maybe, I don't know, just maybe from school or whatever you think of. Um, some of the games that I've seen, I, I think I'm online ones. I'm trying to think of online ones that are a little bit more exciting. Um, mm. I don't have any that are coming straight to mind. <laughs> Okay, no games. Is there any no. game that you like to play? Any game? <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm so confused no. with the one sheet. <laughs> I do like lots of children's games. Um, okay, please share them with right. us. Um, I know lots of games. It's just I like 
team building games. I'm just like, Ugh. um. <laughs> Like, I think I can't concentrate with all of the funny things going on. You're out. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> so you have to laugh. Yeah. Where is everybody going? <laughs> okay. Anyway, so you said children games. So can you maybe explain why you think games are associated to children? I mean, why, why is playing something that reminds you of, of childhood and not something that in adult life also should be done? Maybe... Yes, mm. Yeah. This is true. I guess that in, in my former work, I was always somebody who liked to inter in, in to interact a little bit more with kind of games. Um, yeah. I got a bit addicted to this gamification style of thing of trying to incentivize people to, um, i.e. fill out my surveys, my employee surveys, for example. So in order to increase participation, I would use, I, I guess, gamification to be able to make it more fun and exciting for people. Um, and somehow I do believe that uh, there's still a lot of teams that maybe believe that games are, um, they start to roll their eyes often when I introduce a game, I would say. This is, I guess, more of the common uh, reaction, I would still say. Okay. Well, Depending yeah. on the context. Hey, the one with the pictures, I, I have a feeling it's Mel. Yeah. The oh, new Scrum gosh. Master. It's, yeah, a, it's, a, it's a Scrum. Incapable. It's it a Scrum. Crashed my browser. It crashed. You crashed. <laughs> crashed my browser here. Mel, you got to keep the pictures small. I couldn't. I couldn't <laughs> figure out how to delete either on this tool. There we go. It's small. See, that's a Scrum. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Small pictures are great. Mel, maybe Mel wants to tell us something about the pictures. Why he's yes. such a visual person. Yes. Uh, well, why are you such a visual person and pasting all this crap into this book? This is a scrum. This is a scrum team. So this is exactly it's scrum. It's uh, rugby scrum symbolizes what a scrum is. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got to work together, going in the same direction. You're going to have opposing forces, but you know you got to work together, coordinate as a team to overcome those. The more you work together, the better chance you have. Nice. Matter. Okay, opposing forces. That is Scrum for you. Okay, so did we have? Uh, I like okay. team building games um, where you, you get to build something physical. That's kind of often one that we use, like giving somebody like a spaghetti or one piece of newspaper and two centimeters of sticky tape, and then they have to build the builder's biggest tower or something. Okay, um, let's get on with someone who didn't speak yet. So um, we got just in, Wolfgang is in now. So Wolfgang, how do you feel about being, <laughs> being in? Yeah, so um, <laughs> the question is about uh, team building, yeah? So what, what I, what I, what I, um, did with, with some good uh, success was uh, when I get introduced to a new team, um, I ask them if they, are, if they were playing in their childhood or maybe even today, if they are playing kind time, some kind of um, team sport, if they have yeah. a, any experience with team sport. And usually uh, many people say, okay, when I was uh, a kid or so, or when I was uh, in my, in my uh, teen time, I was playing yeah. football, an example. Or some people say I was playing volleyball or so. Yeah. And I said, uh, asked them, okay, what was your nicest, uh, best experience when you were playing football? And many yeah. people didn't think a while and say, okay, okay, there was one time we were very, we were a little bit behind and it was a very important game. And then we did a lot of ex exercise, tried very hard and then finally we won and everybody was happy and it was so great. It was really big fun. So and then I asked them, and how is that compared to work life? 
have you ever experienced such kind of thing in your work life? And usually people say no. In work, at work, I have never had such nice experience. And then I ask them, uh, how would it be if some of this excitement and this spirit that you have when you make your favorite team sport, how would it be if you would have such kind of same experience in your in your daily work team? Well, okay, that would, would be absolutely great, but it's impossible. Yeah, but to show people that this is something that what is. I mean, it's, it should be possible to have such kind of experience. Working with people together, having interesting challenges, meet these challenges together and celebrate success would be something really um, exciting. Yeah? And uh, then I tell them, this, this is what is my goal for you, uh, for the team as a coach to bring such kind of spirit into, into the work. You said it's not possible, but why is it not possible? Is it possible or not? I think it's, I think it's possible. Uh, this is my, my hope and experience is, is to some parts, not fully, but to some part, but I think people are really, there is nothing more exciting to people than having success with other people on working on the same goal. In example, what I tell them is, I very often, after work, when I'm really tired, I go to a volleyball club. And I'm completely worn already from the, from, the, from, the, from the long day. But I give all my energy in the volleyball club on Tuesday evening to, 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 to win the, the match. And I even don't get money for it. I do it for free. And it cost me so much energy and I'm completely worn after that and tired and so on. But I do this for free just because it's so nice to have a common success with, with other people. So this is, this is for me uh, the the main purpose of uh, all these agile things and so on. For me, it's not uh, to make software better quality or faster or so and get more value to the customer or whatever. That's all nice. It's, it's, it's good. But I think what really counts is what we experience on every day um, in our work because it's our life. I, I really like I really like that. That is that's a that's a great word uh, to say. The experience of winning is something where you, as a team, you win something and you give everything, and then you get a, a kind of reward. And that's is a, a bit of a contradiction. What Mel said: you finish something, and they give you more work on top, and you have already 20 hours of work, and they give you 40 more. That's exactly the opposite. But maybe, uh, maybe uh, Ranjit, you didn't uh, say anything in this round yet. Maybe you tell us something about. How yeah, so you one win? thing, see yeah. this thing about lean coffee. So when in March, when all of us had a bit of a shock, and then when it went into working from home, we had a team which was split across Munich, Hamburg, and India. And uh, what we did was um, we started having coffee meetings every day in the evening at three o'clock. And then the, it was just for 15 minutes. And um, one of the rules we had was we'll talk about everything but work. And um, it was really interesting because, you know, a lot of people were missing that. And um, we had this online meeting, which was part of, normal work day, but then we, we were able to talk about things which are not related to work. And um, it was definitely something which helped so much in the first three to four months. And after that, people started going back to work once in a while, but then it's now become a ritual. And uh, now we do it at least once or once a week or once in two weeks. 
It's nice. Yeah, I think that's that creates relationship. Yeah, and we know as the relationship is very important for communication and to also to to um, to proven the, the processes because as more we know each other, uh, as better we understand each other. So I think. Um, yeah, having uh, success together, but as well uh, have experience together is very important to create this relationship and to get to uh, no? to get closer. Uh -huh. I posted my three favorite uh, games. If you are yes, uh -huh. uh, yes, please, please show us. The, give us a small introduction. I see them. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting that they are on the right side. There seems to be some positive contributions, as opposed to what the left is doing. <laughs> Uh, yes, Ursula, can you please introduce? Uh, yeah, so uh, these yeah. are, yeah, sure. Um, these are um, um, games. Um, they also work um, in real life. So I really love Charade, uh, and you can do that as well uh, online. You just have to share your screen. Um, now your cam you have to switch on your cameras. Uh, and there, and here is an introduction how it works uh, at, at the right side. Um, so I connected with the arrows. And my favorite game is MacGyver. So um, you 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 um, you say to the audience that they should choose three different things from their kitchen or from their uh, workspace. And then you tell them a nightmare, a catastrophe, which will happen in a few minutes. And then they have to create a story how they will defend against the enemies or uh, how they want to to solve uh, uh, their team regarding with these three things they chosen uh, before. Um, yeah, and as well, um, I Never is, is also a game where the people are talking about I never did, <laughs> and um, yeah. So um, you uh, you get to know each other a little bit better, and it could be also very funny. Um, mm. Yeah, that is that's it. Oh, so I've never. It's basically people are much more. It's easier for them to say I've never done this, right? Yes, and then uh, other teammates say, um, yes, me too, for example. Okay. And then you see uh, um, how you are connected. Um, um, yeah, so you can do that in very, uh, um, very different variations. This is just one, one um, variation you can do that. Okay. Okay. Very nice, yeah, that, that's a very good idea. So something constructive is coming out here. It's really nice. So do you have do you have time for one more? I think one more contribution, any story that someone wants to share? Maybe uh, Mel, you want to have something? What keeps you going? How do you interact with your team as a scrum master? Well, you have to answer this question. So as a, I'm, I'm pretty sure the scrum certification doesn't get asked about online teams, but uh, how how do you do team building? Um, good question. I'm not the Scrum Master. I'm just a Scrum Developer. So I'm a certified Scrum Master. So theoretically, te theoretically, I'm a Scrum Master. So I can theoretically answer that question. Okay. And I, I think the suggestion from Ranjit there is quite nice, actually, about the virtual coffee and have a rule of no talk about work because this is, I think, the challenge that we have in most meetings. It's the primary thing is work and, well, there's no time or place for talking about things that are not to do at work. So I think something like that would be a nice, it's a nice addition. The mm -hmm. online coffee. Okay. Mel, you were saying something? Yes, the impediments that get in the way of mm -hmm. delivering a, a, an ideal scrum. Mm -hmm. These are the distractions. It's life, you know, yeah. so the business, you know, new requirements and, 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 and. Mm -hmm. People not people not respecting the integrity of the scrum, you know. 
trying mm. to breach, as we call it, breaching the integrity of the scrum. Mm. Do, you, do you think it's good if scrum is upheld by the book? Is that a question for Angela or a question for Mal? For, for you? I think it depends. Yeah, you've been defending it. Huh? You've been defending it so heavily before. Oh, be I, I, kind of joking. I have no problem with it being breached. It's just that whoever, I have a problem with the developers being expected to work 20 days and 10 days. That's all. Mm -hmm. So I have no issue with things being re reassigned. But what happens if there's 20 days worth of tasks and then suddenly all the tasks spill over? Mm -hmm. and who gets who gets the kicking at the end because of the spillover? You know, that's the bit I think is a bit unfair. You know, so yeah, this is when you know the the scrum master would help the product owner to keep an eye on ad hoc tasks, and if if that becomes a pattern, you would possibly have a buffer for ad hoc tasks, and if there is, you know. Um, You'll need you'll need a pretty strong product owner and a scrum master to be able to keep keep uh, the heat off the developers, and I think that's you know it's easier said than done. It takes a lot of um, you know it takes a lot of uh, delivery, which is done on time and quality, which is shown time after time, for the team you know to be able to stand up and say this is. This is our capacity, and this is what we can deliver with quality to get to the stage. And it needs really strong product owners and um, scrum masters to keep that it keep it that way. Yeah. There's Another a four minutes, Stefan, and then um, we'll move on to the third exercise. So you can continue and close. Okay, well, actually, I think I'm mostly done already. So thank you very much for your contributions. It's uh, very interesting, so I definitely keep that. And if you want to keep, well, we can keep the link. I definitely will have a look at the games and mm -hmm. also think about uh, winning. I really like that, uh, that kind of feeling of winning. That's something that I haven't thought of recent, uh, thought of ever, but this is something that maybe also speaks to, together with that overwhelming world that you have time to breathe and say, well, actually, I, I, I deserve something. I've done a lot of work, but I deserve something. And now I get the kind of reward. I think this is a very uh, also very interesting contribution. Um, so far, um, is anyone, does anyone need uh, have a need to speak more? If not, I would just hand back. Thank you very much, Ranjit. For, uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you very much, everyone, for contributing. And uh, thanks, uh, Ranjit. And, uh, Yes, back to you. Perfect. Thank you, Stefan. Hey, thanks a lot, Stefan. Thanks for jumping in and, uh, you know, showing us a tool. Um, you know, this is, I mean, each of us are using tools day in and day out. You know, we have our regular tools like Jira and Confluence for our issues and for knowledge management. But then, you know, there are a host of tools which are just now coming into the market one after the other to support, you know, the online teams. And it's always interesting to, you know, get a view of a tool like this. For example, Miro, I saw a team in my current company using it. Um, the design team, for example, instead of uh, doing their... Um, you know, they do a monthly call wherein they invite people from different departments. And instead of running through a PowerPoint presentation, they show a Miro board. And in that board, they have post-its which are put in a very nicely readable way. Of course, they're designers, so they know how to present it well. And uh, that was one place where I saw Miro being used for a monthly status meeting. And it felt very different. Uh, from looking at a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, this weekend, I'm going to be attending a, a full day agile um, meetup where they're only using two tools. They're using Zoom for the video conferencing and then they're using Miro 
for all the exercises all throughout the day. So Miro seems to be one of the tools which is gaining a lot of popularity in the agile world. So it's a tool to watch out and thanks for showing it to us. Yeah. Yeah. Mural is, is also a very nice mm. board. Yeah. And, so and it's all to... my retrospectives just with these digital boards at the moment, and it's a lot of fun. Yeah. What's Most the name of the tool again? To type, type the link of the, the tool that you were talking about. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I did type the name. You can repeat all be nice. Yeah. Ursula's typing. In the chat. Oh, Mura. Mura. Ah, Mura. Yeah. Well, now it's time for the third exercise. And for this, I'm going to again share my screen. Right? Oops, here we go. Okay. Hey, can you see my screen now? Yes. Guys, can you see my screen? Yes, yes. Okay, perfect. Now, this is an exercise which is a bit different from the others, and you don't need any tool for it. If you have a piece of paper and pen, it's good. If you don't, you can just, you know, take your, you know, open a open any tool that you're comfortable with it if it is powerpoint if it is any kind of drawing tool and um, you are allowed five shapes and no text at all right so you only have five shapes that you can use and but you cannot use any text you use the five shapes to come up with a concept you can use each shape more than once. You do not need to use all the shapes. Just a mix of different things. You come up with a concept or an idea using these shapes. I played this game with my daughter a few days back to understand what kind of ideas that people can come up with just by giving them five shapes. Now for today, let me also kind of give you you know, a con, a, a place where we can move along. You know, let's take online team building, or let's take Scrum the way you have used it. Agile practices is if you have not been using Scrum and something else like uh, you know Six Sigma practitioners here like Wolfgang. Uh, so keep it in this area. You know, agile frameworks, methodologies, and take these five shapes and five minutes. And then we'll take each diagram, have a look. We'll have somebody else interpret it first, and then go back to the person who drew it and ask them what was their original thought or idea behind it. And you'll have to find a way to share your picture with us. If you draw it on a tool, then you can share it directly. If you're going to draw it in a piece of paper, then you can just show us the piece of paper. Sounds good. OK, you have five minutes to go and I'm going to keep um, this, you know, I'm going to keep this screen shared so that you know which are the shapes that you can use. No text. Your time starts now. Somebody is drawing very loud. 
That would be me. I need a more silent pencil here. Another two and a half minutes. Can I ask a clarification question? Yeah, of course. Do we need to use all the shapes? No, you don't have to. Okay. I've seen amazing stuff coming out of just two shapes. Another 30 seconds and whoever is ready can share their picture. Okay. Do we have a volunteer who's got a scribbling? It doesn't need to be, you know, a Picasso painting. It can just be a scribbling. Okay, let me share. Let me start off. Start this off. I hope I understood. I did understand the task. Thank you, Wolfgang. <laughs> Okay. Okay, here we go. Can you see this? Yes. Okay. Okay, now 
Let's ask somebody to interpret this. Who would like to interpret it? Veda. Okay, so support is the foundation upon which relationships <laughs> help you, no, uh, uh, relationships um, and change help you achieve your goal. You can't do any of that without support. Oh, very nice. Very nice. I think that was that was exactly what I wanted to say. And uh, the only small thing that I want to add here, it's it's a concept called pair programming. Uh, so mm -hmm. you, you, you see there are two stars, right? I was so thinking about something there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There is a relationship between two programmers mm -hmm. who, who are supported by a team. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. together they make a change to reach the goal of improved code quality. Mm -hmm. Nice. <laughs> so who's next? Stefan, come on. You're the drawer among us. You're the... Wolfgang you, has you, a suggestion. You guys need to look at Stefan's drawings sometime. If, he, if he's willing to share it with us at some point. Hey, we can't hear you, Stefan. Here's my drawing. Oh, well, that's very beautiful. Wait a minute. Are you sharing? Am He's... I sharing? Yes. Yes, this is how I'm sharing. I. So, um, someone interpret this, please, for me. Hey, wait a minute. I can't see your screen. Uh, this, sharing? Is, this is too complex. <laughs> It's a, there are two stars. Okay, the stars are transformed a little bit. So maybe they can simplify the stars. Simplify the stars for you. Hey, wait, wait, Stefan. The, the person who's interpreting it just gives their idea. And then, then you give your idea. Then you okay. tell us. Who's going to, Ursula, where are you going to explain the, the stars? No, I can't because I, I can't remember um, what the symbols are meaning. Um. Ah, okay. <laughs> Uh, see the the circle is wholeness, the, the the rectangle is support, the triangle is, and the blitz is change, and the star is a relationship. Okay, then Stefan, go on. Tell us what it, what the picture is about. Um. That's at the bottom here. I wanted to see someone struggling. That was my whole uh, idea here. And now <laughs> all of you give I up. I am struggling totally. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, okay, now I was hoping someone would come up with some good idea and then I could say, oh, yes, yes, that's exactly what I thought. And this is uh, just, to be honest, um, it is a confusion. I'm sorry. No worries. Yes, Who's but uh, maybe let's say, but this is the sun. Let's put it this way. This is the sun here. The sun is shining. The sun is shining on our goals. And the goals are followed by things that give us support. But the goal is going further uh, as it's trying to reach the, its, its direction and its goal. There's a blitz coming and it's trying to interfere with the whole scene. And uh, uh, stars, what were the stars again? The stars, they are circling around. They are circling. The stars are circling and giving a relationship among our, all our people. And they are circling nicely, keeping the thing in motion. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. OK. Now, who's going to go next? Weda, you asked the question. Maybe you do have a drawing there. Uh, do you see my drawing? Oh, OK. Do you guys see um, Wolfgang's drawing? Yes. Okay. I can go after Wolfgang. Who's going to interpret Wolfgang's drawing? Wait, I go for it. Me again. Yeah, you're the one who seems to remember all the shapes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I must be a bit of. 
So relationships are the center and people, relationships and people are the core and heart of achieving a goal. Achieving a goal is at the core and the heart of wholeness of a high performing team. Okay. <laughs> That's nice. I mean, if I mean, if you were if you were a scrum master, inspiration would not be far away. <laughs> so, Wolfgang, what was your idea behind the diagram? So, um, for me, actually, is a is a, is a star. Uh, for me, um, is a, I talked a lot about the scrum values, the five scrum values. Mm -hmm. and this is for me uh, really the core for 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 agile and scrum other values. I also talked a little bit more if these are really the values that are most important for me and I talked about my personal values. So what are actually my values? So the, the scrum values were triggering my own soap process a lot about what is really the important things for me. Mm -hmm. And um, so there are similar things, yeah, but uh, not, yeah, but a little difference, yeah. And the triangle is for me uh, a bigger system uh, because everything is um, what we should ask about is uh, we should think about why uh, what what we are doing is the things that we are doing right. Uh, uh, how do we do things? This is a lot about what the scrum master thinks about. Yeah? Product owner more thinks about what we are doing, are we doing the right things? The Scrum Master is how we are doing the things, but what is missing is why we are doing things. So I think there should be a little bit more thinking about and more discussion about the purpose of what we are doing. Uh, what is the bigger value? What is the, yeah, what is, Sounds good. Yeah. And uh, of course, everything then leads into the wholeness. So it's a, it's a really the bigger, more philosophical question. Yeah. So how does all this contribute to the <laughs> to everything? Sounds good. We we'll, we'll, we'll circle back to the philosophy. Let's see if Mel got philosophical by now. Mel, do you have a diagram or a picture to share with us? I took a toilet break. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. I didn't do one. Who else has got a picture for us? I can share my picture. Go on. Oh no. Screen on screen. Okay. That's a skyscraper that fell on its top. <laughs> yeah, it looks complicated. Stefan, come on, you're going to interpret this. So, okay, so we have a lot of foundations. All these squares are foundations. Foundations are <laughs> stacked on top of foundations. So this is, uh, takes, uh, this project takes, uh, builds upon a lot of other smaller things that have been done before. So it's really well settled and has a lot of, um, a lot of things contributing to it. And all those foundations basically build on top of, of uh, well, build in the direction of, of the goal. So the, the goal <laughs> is on top. But then there is the wholeness cut, uh, struck by lightning. So there is a blitz and it's basically destroyed. So what happens is that instead of supporting the goal, the all those supporting foundations are pressing the goal down and this flips upside down. So really it's going backwards. So something very bad is happening here. So something instead of moving upwards and being well supported flips over and sticks into the ground. So this, <laughs> this, this image very clearly is, has one meaning and that is catastrophe. <laughs> okay. So trust, trust Stefan to take, to look at an image upside down. So Vaida, was, was, did you hold your image upside down or do you have a different interpretation than catastrophe? 
I was thinking it was rather positive. Can you still hear me? Okay. Yes, we can. The screen on screen is not so great. Um, uh, I remember my uh, CSM trainer doing some kind of drawing, but I think I did it wrong. But anyway, uh, what I was thinking about was that in order to be able to achieve a goal, the triangle at the top, you need a lot of support and all of that support needs to work very closely together. There are stars, which I don't think you can see between all of the blocks. Mm -hmm. So teams supporting each other, having strong relationships in order to achieve their goal. And, and that is kind of what creates a whole team. So for, on, the, le on the, oh, the other side, which is my upside down skyscraper, it's the same format. However, if you get struck by lightning with this shape of the upside down triangle without a full wholeness, I guess your team crumbles. But if it's built the right way from the base up, then uh, your team will not be too disrupted by change that is struck that they if they are struck by. Okay, perfect. Thanks a lot. You know what? I'm just like two things come to my mind. First, if, if Stefan's daughter was playing this game, I think we would have <laughs> we would have very interesting images coming up. Oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> is that her work? work that she saw me drawing and she joined in so when the, something is about drawing she can't be stopped so she already oh participated God. in this game so my, anyone anyone guesses what's going on in my daughter's mind let <laughs> me see you know i think i think there are a lot of goals scattered around her and um, she can feel the change coming from the top and with the relationships that she's built around her, she can take these goals and bring it to home. <laughs> yes, I'll I, I, I translate and then inform you if it's correct. And uh, thanks, Veda, for the, um, the pictures. You know what, you know, if you keep drawing like that, very soon uh, when the safe, when the scaled scrum safe, Framework needs redrawing. They're going to call on you. <laughs> okay. Ursula is the last one. Um, Ursula, is there anything you'd like to share for us to look, interpret? I'm sorry. I have no drawing. No worries. No worries. And uh, so basically this exercise is to, to kind of break the, um, you know, break the norm of always having text, um, you know, dictating what we think or how we approach an idea. This is just taking five shapes and letting us coming up with some ideas on. And the ideas need not necessarily always be positive. They can also be negative or catastrophic. And uh, sometimes a picture says more than a thousand words and um, if you can use this to break up the monotony of what we're doing, I think it's a nice exercise to do together. Yeah. So that's it for this time. I mean, this time we, we've tried out a few things. We did a celebrity interview with Mel. We've done, um, we've looked at Miro as a tool and all drawn together and interpreted it together. So I hope you guys had fun. We still have a bit of time. So if anybody's interested, you can hang around for a chat uh, for another 10 to 12 minutes. I'm going to just stop the recording at this point. So thanks a lot for being part of the Scrum Speakers.